In this lesson, we'll take a look at maxima and minima for a function. And if you take a look at the graph here, there's uh, several what are called local minima and local maxima points. This is called a local minima point because in, on the interval close to it, to the immediate left, the immediate right, uh, it's, the, it's the lowest point on a small interval around that point. This is called a local maximum point because if you go to the immediate left, the immediate right, the graph is lower than it. It's the highest point on a small interval around that point. And then there's another local ma minima here, another local maxima here. That's a special kind there we'll talk about as well. Now, what I'm going to do is, for this local minimum point, I'm going to draw a tangent line to the left of it and also a tangent line to the right of it. And notice that the tangent line changes from having a negative slope on the left to a positive slope on the right. We can also interpret that as having a negative derivative value on the left to a positive derivative value on the right side of that local minima. And so local minima, one of the characteristics of them is that the derivative changes from a negative to a positive as you go from left to right. Now for a local maximum, the opposite is true. To the immediate left, if you draw a tangent line to the left, it's positively sloped. To the right, it's a negatively sloped line. And so one of the characteristics of a local maximum point is the derivative changes from positive on the left to negative on the right. Now for any of these local minimum and local maximum points, if you draw a tangent line at the local min or max, notice that it's completely horizontal. So not only is the at a minimum point, the derivative changing from negative to positive, but uh, the, at the actual local minimum point, the derivative is value is zero because there'd be a horizontal tangent line here just like there is here. Same for the local maximum point, the tangent line, if we drew it in there, would be uh, horizontal, so the derivative would be zero. So for local minimum, the tangent line changes from a negative to a positive slope, and the derivative is zero, and same for a local maximum point. Now this point right here is a peculiar point. It's called a corner or a cusp. And it's a place where the derivative is undefined because if I can't, I can't actually draw in a, a tangent line here at that point and expect it to be horizontal. And that's because of the fact that it's a corner. It's not a smooth curve. If I drew in a tangent line to the, just barely to the left of it, the tangent line would actually be quite steep. It would be very, uh, a high positive number for the value of the derivative and it, because it would be going up like this. If I drew a tangent line to the immediate right of it, it would actually slope in this direction because actually I've got a straight line here. And so it's back to that idea that the uh, left and right hand limits are not the same. To the just barely to the left, it has a positive tangent line. To barely to the right, it has a negative. So uh, it's not continuous like the other local minimum and maximum points on this graph. So the derivative is said to be undefined there. So a place where the derivative is undefined is another place where you can have a local minimum or local maximum point. And the derivative would still change from uh, uh, in the same way as it does for the other local minimum maximum points. Uh, for the maximum point, if it's a, a corner or cusp, uh, it would still change from a uh, positive to a negative. So local minimum maximum occurs where the derivative is zero, and in which case there's a horizontal tangent line, or where the derivative is undefined. And so for local maximum max minimum points, they occur where the derivative changes from negative to positive. And for local maximum points, uh, occur where the derivative is zero and it changes from positive to negative. Now one of the definition on this page, page a critical number of, of a function is some number a or some value a in the domain of the function for which either the derivative value is zero or the derivative value is undefined or does not exist. Now, if a is a critical number, a place where the derivative is either zero or uh, undefined, the point a comma f of a is called a critical point. And so uh, it's a place where there's a local minimum or local maximum, most likely. There are a few exceptions to that. To determine the absolute maximum minimum values of a function, the absolute, which means you're given some interval and asked to find what's the positively highest point or positively lowest point, I, should, I don't mean positively as in a positive value or a negative value. I mean absolutely the biggest or smallest. Uh, so what you do is you find the critical numbers, the places where the derivative is either zero or undefined, and you substitute those critical numbers uh, and the x-coordinates of the endpoints in the interval into the function and look for the, the biggest y-value or function value and the lowest. Now uh, another little something about the uh, 
um, uh, the function here, and we'll get into this in the example on the next page. Uh, this point right here, if this is the entire function, that's the absolute maximum point for this whole graph. And we're talking from x values from negative 2 to uh, positive 6 here. Uh, notice that that point does not occur at uh, a local minimum or local maximum point. Local min here, local max, local min here, local max. Uh, these are the endpoints that uh, where x is 6 and where x is negative 2. So that's the absolute maximum value. Notice it occurs at an endpoint. The um, uh, absolute minimum value would be the y value of negative 2 here. And it does actually occur at a local minimum point. So flipping over the example on uh, the second page, we're asked to find the absolute minimum and maximum values for this function on the interval negative 2 to 3. And here's a sketch that I'll refer to uh, a little later on here. So the procedure for this, or algorithm, is you set the derivative to 0. So the derivative of 4x cubed would be 12x squared. Derivative of 9x squared is 18x. Derivative of negative 30x is negative 30. And of course, 7 is a constant, so its derivative is 0. So we set that equal to uh, 0 because that will tell us where there's horizontal tangent lines. There is no place on this uh, curve where the derivative is undefined. In fact, that's kind of the, uh, uh, the anomaly. You, you don't see too many places where derivative is undefined, but you will see a few here and there. Now notice that we can divide this all by 6 and make the quadratic equation a little bit simpler. So dividing the whole equation by 6, we get this. And this will factor into 2x plus 5x minus 1. Now this isn't really the lesson where I'll show how to factor quadratics. Uh, there are other lessons that we've done previously if you want to see that. So it factors into 2x plus 5 and x minus 1. And we set each of these factors to 0. If you set 2x plus 5 to 0, you get negative 5 halves, or negative 2.5. And you set x minus 1 to 0, you get positive 1, because 1 minus 1 makes that 0. So there's two places where this curve, this cubic function, has a horizontal tangent line at negative 2 and a half and at positive 1. So the, uh, the algorithm, as per what was written on the bottom of the last page, says, so what you do now is you substitute these numbers in place of x in the original function, and that'll give us what the y values would be, the function values. And we're looking for the biggest one and the smallest one. So I substitute 1 in, so notice I've got 1 here, here, and of course 1 in place of x there. And that works out to negative 10. And then you also substitute the endpoints, the negative 2 and 3. And if I put negative 2 in place of x in the original function, I get 71, and then 3 gives me 106. Now notice that negative 2.5 is not in this interval. So this interval really is kind of like I'm uh, only going to look at values between negative 2 and positive 3. So I'm going to for, forget about this part and forget about this part. So I'm really only talking about this part of the curve here. So that's why I didn't bother put negative 5 halves or negative 2.5 in place of x in the function because that number, even though it's a place where the function has a uh, derivative of 0, uh, it is not in this interval. So we just don't bother with it because it's not in the interval that we're asked to search on. So the, uh, the absolute maximum value is 106 and occurs where x is 3. And the absolute minimum value, minimum value is the negative 10 and occurs where x is 1. So 106, that's the 106 right there, occurs at uh, where x is 3. And the lowest point here uh, where x is 1 uh, gives us a y value of negative 10. In the example on the, the last example here, in example two, we're given the company that manufactures top of the line computer speakers. And they estimate the profit to be given by, the profit is negative five times n squared plus 500n plus five for production runs of 80, zero to 80 sets of speakers. So we're asked to find how many should they make in a, in a run to maximize their profit. So what we're really asked to do then is look for this function on 0 to 80 and find what the maximum profit would be. So just like on the previous page, we would differentiate. So negative 5n squared derivative is negative 10n, and derivative of 500n is 500. And we would set that equal to 0. And we would solve for n. So we would get 10n equals 500, divide out the 10, and we get 50. So now what we should do is check the profit for 50, 0, and 80. So there's our uh, profit function again. So if we put 0 in place of n, of course the profit just works out to be $5. That's not going to be our maximum, that's for sure. Let's put 50 in. And if you put 50 in, you get a profit of 12505 And then we'll do the 80 as well. 
and we get eight thousand and five dollars so the company uh, so this is certainly the biggest one will maximize the profit when they make 50 sets per run.